name is Behar Abdelhai. I'm a professor in the Department of Civil Engineering. Uh, I'm a member of the Transportation Group. I am the director of the Intelligent Transportation Systems Center, which we're sitting in at the moment. Favorite type of food, sushi. Yeah, I like sushi. But I also like Middle Eastern food, being from there, so I'm kind of used to the kebabs and tabbouleh. And... I'm originally from Cairo, Egypt. Um, I did my undergrad at Cairo University in Egypt, actually, and my master's too. And then uh, I uh, went to the United States, the University of California, Irvine, and then I joined uh, the University of Toronto as a professor since 1998. Well, my research can be classified to be in the area of transportation engineering in general, but within transportation engineering, there is uh, a field that's relatively new, known as Intelligent Transportation Systems. And within Intelligent Transportation Systems, I focus primarily on advanced traffic control and management. Within civil engineering, I picked transportation because it's uh, large-scale system-oriented, almost like a puzzle. Um, you, you fix one thing, something else changes, you fix the other thing. Um, so it, it's interesting from that regard. And I also like artificial intelligence. So our grand objective is to be able to get you from A to B as fast as possible, encountering the least possible delay, uh, least possible number of stops, uh, uh, least fuel consumption, least pollution, uh, and so on. Actually, the most cutting-edge topic is as fresh as today. Today, I, we just uh, graduated uh, a brilliant uh, PhD student. Uh, she developed uh, a system that makes traffic lights learn. Um, so think of a traffic light as a robot, for example, where um, uh, as it sees congestion develop and as it tries different combinations of control strategies, it would learn what works and what doesn't work. Transmission problems are household problems nowadays. Nobody um, you don't need a PhD to, to realize that uh, there's congestion and the transportation system is breaking down. Um, so everybody suffers in, in traffic. Everybody, if, even if you take transit, oh, still uh, is not as fast as we would like it to be. We, we collaborate with uh, a number of stakeholders. For the government, for, for example, where we're at at the moment, at the ITS Center at UFT, this research center is connected to uh, hundreds of cameras and uh, tens of uh, several hundred detectors uh, that measure traffic congestion in different places in the Greater Toronto Area. And these are operated, owned and operated by the Ministry of Transportation of Ontario and the City of Toronto. But rather we use what we see uh, for research and development. So our masters and PhD students uh, use the information to come up with creative uh, solutions to transportation problems. Now we also have uh, systems that connect uh, universities across Canada to this center, oneits.net, uh, which is the web-based platform that we have, and you have access to information from Toronto, you can test your systems on Toronto, or you can lend us whatever you're doing at the University of Calgary or any other university. The future of intelligent transportation systems um, I can think of it as threefold. Uh, the first thing that we'll see is much more efficient transportation networks. So, for instance, you receive information on your smartphone telling you where congestion is and where else has spare capacity so you can uh, avoid congestion. That in itself uh, distributes the load across, like the traffic load across the network and makes it more efficient. Number two, which is actually happening as we speak, is automated driving. So if the car can drive itself, first of all it's prone to less accidents because computers are driving the car uh, and not people. Uh, number two, it increases the capacity a lot. So we're talking about, for example, a freeway that traditionally carries about 2,000 vehicles per hour per lane would carry as high as five or 6,000 vehicles per hour per lane. Third, I'm I think it will be a few years before we actually see that cars will fly. Uh, that might sound absurd at this time, but uh, if you Google that, you'll see that several companies uh, and organizations like NASA are testing cars that uh, fly, so you can drive the car on the ground, still put it on your driveway and park it in your garage, 
but uh, you can actually fly the same way you would fly a small uh, uh, aeroplane. Now the implications of this are not very clear yet because would we have congestion in the sky? Nobody knows yet, but nevertheless it will be much faster uh, and it will open new horizons for everybody.